whatever we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. I wanted to take the time to update everyone on what's been happening since we closed our doors on March 31st. Last week we had a renter. This week she has moved out. She has been bullied and harassed to the point where she felt that her only option was to move. This is not about love and tolerance. This is about bullying and harassing people that don't agree with you. Where is the tolerance for Christians? If this is happening to us, this must be happening to other Christians. You would think closing after 22 years due to the threat of an ordinance being introduced would be enough, but no. The local LGBT activists and their allies went after our renter and our livelihood. We are asking you to pray for us that God will provide a renter so that we have an income since we have closed our doors. And we thank you all for the support. Rape, murder, and arson. What could be more frightening than any of these threats? Yet a Christian-owned bridal shop in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, not only had to suffer through one of these deeply terrorizing threats, but all three. And the threats came from a community of people who often claimed to be victims of such bullying tactics, gay activists and their homosexual sympathizers. The story begins here, in the small Pennsylvania town of Bloomsburg. With a population of just 15,000, it's no surprise there are only two bridal shops in the area. One of those bridal shops is WW Bridal Boutique which has serviced hundreds of customers during its 20-year history. It is owned by a mother and her two daughters, all of them devout Christians. It was a business they had hoped to one day hand down to their own daughters. But these bridal doors are now shut, and their dreams perhaps shattered forever because they refused to service a same-sex wedding. It was a refusal that brought about threats to shoot the owners in the head, to have their homes and businesses burned to the ground, and even to have their children raped. I felt that each one of us had really kind of come to the realization within them, their own spirit that, that it was going to be a problem. We feel that it's a holy sanctified ceremony. How long is it until something comes through the door or over the phone that uh, is a problem. We had a uh, woman call that was one of our bridesmaids for a wedding party. I said to her, well, we, we're um, able to fit your bridesmaid's dress. However, currently we are not serving same-sex couples. Anything other than traditional marriage would violate God's law, so we were not able to participate. And then from there, uh, the uh, other phone calls and emails of threats not only to us, but our children and our employees started to come in. We did have to lock our doors for two weeks due to the threats. So at that point, we were appointment only, and they were uh, you know, our customers were afraid of their own safety, so they avoided coming during those two weeks. The Christian community did come out and start supporting us. It did seem like we were targeted. What? What were some of the threats that came in? There was one that said, um, twist our neck until we went um, black. Then there was another one uh, that said that uh, a bullet put in our skull and that they um, somebody was going to kill um, uh, not only us, but they were going to go after our family. We had a voicemail that said, we're coming after you, your employees, you're done. And... Um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna kill you. And that was just this past year, but in 2014, we actually had some people call and, and uh, actually say um, about raping our children. And so we just had to, um, you know, discuss whether we were willing to go through all of that process again and, and being targeted again, and then have that, all the threats start. And, and it just got to the point where we decided that we couldn't handle it for a third time. As tragic as this story is, WW Bridal Boutique is not the only Christian business or church that has faced threats of death, rape, and arson from the radical homosexual community and their fanatical followers. Soon, we'll be bringing you their stories as well. Be sure to subscribe to our channel below so you can be notified when they are released. And please, go to our website 
at ChristianAction.org for updates on this story, outtakes from our interviews, and even more shocking documentation of what this bridal shop had to suffer. I'm Martin Moyer for PRB News and Christian Action Network.